everyone Christian here and I promised you guys I would start getting into cycads so let's we'll start with one that some people might know and many others may not know because they're not really into cycads yet but um, this is uh, called Encephalartus ferox also known as the holly leaf cycad now at first glance it just looks like a, a bunch of bushes full of uh, thorns and you're partially right because it really is a very uh, bushy plant with a lot of thorns to it now there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> one thing that uh, cycads do the uh, palm stone is they create offsets that you can actually take off and reroot. Very few palms can actually do that where most cycads will do that and um, I wanted to do this vlog here because we can see uh, the the uh, dioecious nature of <clears throat> of cycads. All cycads are dioecious meaning you need a male and a female. Those are male cones that are now uh, they've dropped their pollen and this is a female. The female has a nice uh, red cone about it. In fact, it's very hard to get to and that's why the, the plant uh, did that on purpose so that we wouldn't, uh, you know, animals wouldn't get in there and eat them before the plant itself was ready to uh, let the cones dehiss. The de dehissing is a term meaning the cone falls apart and the seeds fall down and then it allow, it basically allows animals to get them from the ground or any place that they may be able to reach. So um, usually actually almost all the time you will need to pollinate <clears throat> at least in North America in Cephalardos uh, as the there are no natural pollinators so even here unless the wind blew it over this cone is probably not pollinated so the male cones are going to be longer and not as wide and the female cones are going to be uh, shorter and fatter which is I can't really let's get over here a little bit but um so this this uh Cycad, it has, it's called the holly leaf cycad because the, the leaves kind of look like a holly leaf that you'd see on a holly tree. And uh, they are native to South Africa, notably uh, it's called KwaZulu Natal province in the eastern, southeastern part of the country. And they tend to grow in, uh, they, they tend to grow in swampy areas near the Mozambique border. And this area is pretty hot, uh, swampy, kind of like the Everglades in Florida. And they, they actually will handle a decent amount of water. They enjoy water. Uh, I wouldn't say they like to sit in the swamps, but they will. They like the water to run by them. Um, I think the, their drainage is pretty decent there. And uh, this is one of the cycads that will handle a lot more water, like the, what we have in Florida, versus a lot of the blues, blue cycads that you'll see um, around the internet. So this is used in landscaping sometimes in. Uh, in Florida because of it, it seems to really do well in South Florida with the alkaline soil and uh, <clears throat> Another thing about this site is it's uh, It's relatively cold hardy. Uh, I would say it's probably a zone 9 a zone zone mid zone 9 uh, It'll take 25 degrees. It, it'll it'll definitely burn the leaves will burn you could burn all the leaves and they'll regrow uh, the next you know the next uh, come spring I guess you could say and um yeah, the seed is going to be uh, ovoid. It's going to be, well, it's, I'm sorry, it's going to be more like a, almost syndrilical, ovoid to syndrilical, uh, about an mm, inch and a half to two inches long, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch wide. And they, they, each of them, one of those cones can hold uh, a couple hundred seeds. Uh, and this plant, you know, these plants are a little bit harder to find around. You can get seedlings for $10 or so. Uh, if you find the right person, you might pay a little bit more if you go to a retail place. But uh, when they're solitary, they can they tend to do this. If you can see here, there's actually uh, two heads to, this, to that one there. Uh, one is kind of right here, and then one is kind of over here. And if you look in the middle, you can kind of see where there's two. One's kind of breaking away from another. And that's actually called cresting, where uh, a head will actually turn into two. And it won't really separate and create two trunks. It'll more just keep its height, but just create two separate heads to it and create a, a, a crest of heads, so to speak. So um, it, it gives it a neat look. Some people don't like it because it, it kind of gives it a little bit less tidy look um, if it, as opposed to having a single head. But you can always, um, you can't cut the cresting part off, but you can uh, cut off pups. And there are a couple pups on this male here <clears throat> and but they're as you can imagine they're quite a uh, pain to get to uh, you will bleed uh, I recommend this is a little trick of the trade to use welders gloves uh, you won't get uh, poked nearly as much so um, these plants are protected under CITES which is a uh, center of international trade of endangered species 
under our, our Appendix One, so you can't send you can't send seeds or plant material across international borders. So, if you're looking for this plant, look for it within your country, because bringing it you need special permits to bring it uh, across borders. So, uh, with that said, it makes a great landscape plant. It's a cool. It's a definitely a novelty for those who aren't really into cycads but kind of want something different. And um, that one definitely needs to be trimmed up. <laughs> I prefer the trimmed look. Uh, this is more of a natural look. The leaves kind of, you know, they hold down at the horizontal. So with that said, if you guys have any more questions about Encephalardus ferox or other uh, Encephalardus like that or cycads, introduction I should say, because this, this should be the first vlog I believe about cycads, um, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And I hope you guys enjoy your holidays. Thank you.